Hey, welcome back to the channel, everyone. And today we're gonna to be building an enclosure. This is a continuation of part one where I built the table for my Onefinity CNC. And in the four months that have passed since I made the table, I had a lot of time to think about how I wanted the design for this enclosure to look. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you through some of the alternative designs that I considered. And then I'm gonna take you through the fabrication and the assembly process for this enclosure. Let's go. If you watched part one to this video series, you know that I hopped into SketchUp to design this table very soon after ordering my Onefinity. And I went with a four x four construction to more closely emulate what I used on my workbench in my shop. So once I had the table designed, I went ahead and built the table and took some time to think about how I would design and build the enclosure around the Onefinity. A few things to point out is this is right up against a wall, so I don't have access to the back side of the Onefinity. So how do you design an enclosure to where you can access all parts of it and get in there to maintain it and operate it without having to move the table once it's installed? So that led me down a design path where I had a sliding mechanism to take the front part of the enclosure to be able to slide it backwards, telescopic style. But I couldn't wrap my head around how to enclose it. So I went through a couple of different design iterations and I'd like to share that with everybody today in case you're in a similar spot thinking about how to design something that's gonna work for your space. The easiest thing would be to have a couple of double doors that open up uh, like French doors. That doesn't necessarily work well with my shop. I like that it provided really good visibility and it's simple in its design. But if you look at how that walkway space is between my Onefinity and my workbench, that would have made things pretty tight. And it would have meant that if I had the doors open, I could not walk through. So I decided to keep exploring design alternatives. Another option I seriously considered was having a single door with a piano hinge on the top side of the enclosure, allowing the entire front door to lift up as a single piece and give you full access to the CNC. The pros is that it would give you a lot of visibility. The cons that I thought of would it be very heavy to lift and it might cause the enclosure to sag a little bit on the top because of all the weight, which would also be difficult just to lift it up in the base case because this is three quarter inch plywood. So I decided not to go with that and went to a double hinged door mechanism. So this door has a piano hinge on the top like the previous design, but also has one in the middle. And what that allows you to do is as you're lifting the door up, the middle piece folds in on itself and the resting position looks a little bit like this. You're looking at the final product right now. Um, but that is a much more reasonable weight to lift up. And it's got this added benefit of locking into place whenever you actually close the door. So that's what I went with. Another benefit of waiting until you receive the CNC to build the enclosure is that you can use it to help create the panels that will make up your enclosure. So I hopped into Fusion 360 and created the uh, outline of what I wanted the panels to look like. And it was essentially, you know, taking my panels of plywood and then putting a smaller window inside, and just using a two inch radius on each of the corners to give it a little bit of a softer look. I then used a, a larger rectangle to create an inset for where the plexiglass could sit in. And then I'll later use some adhesive to install that into the um, panels themselves. So I don't go into the details of how I actually did this. I briefly covered this in another video where I created my very first project on the CNC and I covered how do you take a workflow starting from the CAD, the computer aided design, through the computer-aided manufacturing, which is the CAM process, and then exporting that to G-Code, which your CNC can then use. If you're familiar with C's, CNC workflow, this is gonna be very common language to you, but if you're new, like I was, there's a little bit of a learning curve that you have to go through to understand what what the software is, is trying to do. And it, it's essentially taking your ideas that are in your head and translating that into something that the machine can use to cut out. To create these panels, the toolpath is gonna to follow two distinct sets of instructions. 
first set of instructions is going to be to carve out the inlay where the plexiglass is going to sit in that rectangular inset. Well, the second set of instructions will be to cut out the rectangular window with the nice radius corners on them. Once the panels were cut, I took some 220 grit sandpaper to the edges just to clean them up and knock off some of the burrs that were created in the CNC milling process. To hold the plexiglass panels in place, I used a little bit of Gorilla Clear Maximum Strength Construction Adhesive, and that seemed to work really well. By applying a small bead of caulk in a zigzag pattern, you get a really good surface area that the plexiglass can adhere to, and so far I haven't had any issues with it. And as a protective measure, I decided to leave the protective film on the back side of the plexiglass until after I had installed and assembled all of the panels of the enclosure together. The assembly of this enclosure is going to be pretty straightforward because everything is rectangular and I'm not going to be using any adhesive whenever putting this together. I'm just going to be using pre-drilled holes with some wood screws to hold everything together. This will allow me to take it apart if I ever need to down the road. And after driving a dozen or so screws, the back part of the enclosure starts to come together pretty quickly. And before I put on the roof of the back part of the enclosure, I decided to install the LED lights that are going to illuminate the CNC enclosure. I picked up this set off of Amazon. These aren't one of the fancy color changing sets. These are just the normal daylight LED strips. But one thing I did learn from the reviews is that it's better to use some CA glue to actually hold it down. So you see me not relying on the adhesive that came with it, but using some CA glue and some activator to actually install these in place. And I make a little bit of a zigzag pattern starting from both ends of the enclosure and kind of working my way towards the middle. And what this is going to uh, allow me to do is have a functioning set of LEDs with a switch in the back of the enclosure so that whenever I want to have good visibility, I can turn these lights on and it'll illuminate the enclosure for me. So once I had a chance to install the roof on the back panel, it was time for a quick function test to see what it looked like. Pretty cool. To help hide some of the wiring, I actually drilled a hole on the upper part of the back panel. So the wiring is run very close to the top of the enclosure, so you can't really see it unless you're looking for it, which just gives a very clean and finished look to this enclosure. Since the front part of the enclosure is going to glide on rails, I installed a two inch tall maple board and anchored it to the CNC table, which will allow the drawer sliders to be installed directly to that board. That way, whenever the enclosure is closed, the slider's not under stress. It's in its natural resting position. And then whenever you open it, then it cantilevers and extends beyond where what the closed position would look like. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but that's the design choice that I went with. And once those rails were installed, things started to come together very quickly. And so after installing the roof to the front part of the panel, we were ready to start working on the front door. To fabricate the front panels of the enclosure, I followed a very similar process that I did for the side panels of the enclosure, just adjusted for the dimensions of the two front panels that I was creating. 
These were surprisingly time consuming because I had to do each panel in two different parts because half the panel sticks out of the CNC cuttable area. So this actually took a little bit more time than I was expecting, but I ended up with two pieces that had the insets cut out for the windows and I glued them in using a very similar process that I did before. To attach these to the enclosure, I just used two 48 inch piano hinges, one on the inside for the middle hinge and then one on the outside on the very top. This will allow it to open up properly. So after all that anticipation, this is how the final product turned out. And I'm really, really happy with it. Whenever the front door of the enclosure is shut, it suppresses a lot of the noise that comes from the router. And you're not having to make any compromises on the dust extraction because of the two and a half inch line that comes up from the bottom of the CNC table. You're still getting really good removal of shavings and debris as you're milling on your projects with your CNC. Now, because the enclosure essentially takes up the entire footprint of the table, I ended up mounting my screen and my control unit on the underside of the table. The control unit is fixed for obvious reasons, but I decided to put the screen on an articulating arm, which is actually made from a very small TV stand that's meant to protrude outward from a wall. And I just retrofitted it to accommodate the 10.8 inch screen from Onefinity. So whenever you want to use it, you can pull it out. And whenever you don't want to use it, you can bend it back in under the table. I may end up moving this down the road, but for the moment, that's where it's going to live. And while I'm on the topic, I do want to issue a public service announcement for anyone that's starting to design their layouts for their CNC. The cables that you get for your screen and your axes from Onefinity are quite short. So if you want to start moving things around, just be prepared to buy some longer cables to give you that flexibility. And that about wraps up this video. There was a lot of time and effort that I spent over the last five months designing an enclosure that would work well for my particular shop. And I hope that you're able to get something of value that you can then take back to your shop as you're thinking through some of the design features of an enclosure that you want to build. I also want to say thank you for all the support that I've been getting. I'm approaching a thousand subscribers. And for those who don't know, I'm going to go and invest in a saw stop table saw whenever I get to a thousand. And we're really close. I just wanted to say thank you for all the support. All right, I'll see you on the next one.